behalf of Kenya, we are truly privileged uh, as part of the Commonwealth the family to be hosting the 12th Women Affairs Minister, Minister's Meeting uh, in September 2019. Um, this being a conscious decision that we made as a country uh, to host um, the 12th one. Because uh, we, have, we, are, we are at uh, a watershed moment as a country where we have seen a lot of progress uh, that has been made on the four priority areas of the Commonwealth uh, on matters gender. But also we have also experienced our fair uh, uh, share of challenges and uh, specifically on issues of uh, violence against women and girls and also on matters of um, gender and climate change. We anticipate that the 12th WAM will uh, um, link to other processes that are ongoing. Um, in, in the frame of the Commonwealth, uh, we, and we want to link 12th uh, WAM to the Chagam of 2020, that the proposal that we are, gonna, we are going to make will be aligned to the four priority themes, but most importantly for us uh, as a country, we want to see people that address the systemic uh, cause of gender uh, inequality, because these are the real issues that uh, once addressed, uh, then the um, uh, basic uh, gender uh, concerns like uh, education, parity in education, uh, issues of, for example, reduced mortality, mortality rates. These can be addressed uh, conclusively if we address the systemic causes of gender inequality. We stand at a really important time in history where we are making progress, but some progress is very slow and in some areas we're going backwards. So I ask all ministers to read the declaration and bring themselves to Nairobi, and bring their thoughts and passion envisioned for women and girls and girls for the next generation because together we can make an impact on the women's lives and girls lives in the Commonwealth but we can also make an impact globally on women and girls and girls of the future. We want to present a call to the ministers uh, responsible for women affairs across the Commonwealth that the agenda of gender equality and women empowerment requires resourcing and that resourcing cannot be left to, to, to third parties, that is donors and partners. We need to invest in this as ourselves because if we are true to the call that we must move with everybody, nobody should be left behind, then we should be resourcing action that help us to achieve that running call of leaving one behind. These leaders are the drivers of the lasting changes that needs to happen. I think we've committed enough at the highest level of our leaders and our heads. It is time that we accelerate and we haven't got enough time. This afternoon we saw a panel of distinguished persons coming together to discuss issues affecting women, gender, women and girls and some of the salient points that came out, the need for more laws to be passed in terms of harmonizing those that are there and bringing more support to gender equality. For us in the Caribbean, um, we might not have the same problems as those persons who are from the African continent, but what we have that is of major concern is the lack of women in elective politics. We would hope that the Commonwealth Secretariat could advance more legislation, more um, user-friendly legislation, and not only just pass the legislation, but have the necessary dialogue with um, the, the heads of state, the heads of government, and even down to the heads of, of, of political parties because there is where it starts. If we don't have buy-in from the political parties, then there isn't the wherewithal for women to traverse that space.